Hey, what's up, man? It's your boy, Yash Chosen. We're continuing the book of Jasher, chapter 56. We're on verse um, 29, no, 28. And also from the land of Canaan did, those, did the women come unto Egypt when they heard that Jacob was dead. And they wept for him in Egypt for 70 days. That is completeness, perfection is completeness. And it came to pass after this that Joseph commanded his servants, the doctor, to embalm his father with myrrh and frankincense and all manner of incense and perfume. And the doctors embalmed Jacob as Joseph had commanded them. And all the people of Egypt and the elders and the inhabitants of the land of Goshen wept and mourned over Jacob. And all his sons and the children of his household lamented and mourned over their father Jacob many days. And after the days of his weeping had passed away, at the end of the 70 days, Joseph said to Pharaoh, I will go up and bury my father in the land of Canaan, as he made me swear, and then I will return. That's Genesis 50, verse 5. And Pharaoh sent Joseph, saying, Go up and bury thy father, as he said, and as he had made thee swear. And Joseph rose up with all his brethren to go to the land of Canaan to bury their father Jacob, as he had commanded them. Genesis 50, verse 6. And Pharaoh commanded that it should be proclaimed throughout Egypt, saying, Whoever goeth not up with Joseph and his brethren to the land of Canaan to bury Jacob shall die. And all Egypt heard of Pharaoh's proclamation. They all rose up together, and all the servants of Pharaoh and the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt went up with Joseph. And all the officers and nobles of Pharaoh went up as the servants of Joseph. And they went to bury Jacob in the land of Canaan. Now, we have these people in Egypt. We have the Pharaoh in Egypt. You know, we know they have their own gods and everything. So, why is it that the Pharaoh would pro proclaim to his own people that they should go up to go bury this Hebrew, this Israelite, in Canaan? I don't know why. Although Pharaoh had his gods, he knew the true and living God. And that was Yah, and that was Yah. He knew it was through Yah, through Joseph, being able to interpret that dream because none of his Egyptian gods could give him that knowledge, that intelligence to uh, interpret his dreams. But he knew the, the, the God of the Hebrews is the all-powerful God. And the sons of, uh, where am I at? Okay, and the sons of Jacob carried the buyer upon which he lay according to all that their father commanded them so did his sons unto him and the bar was of pure gold and it was inlaid around about with onyx stones and bethlehem and the covering of the bar was gold woven work joined with threads and over them were hooks of onyx stones and bethlehem and joseph placed upon the head of his father jacob a large golden crown and he put a golden scepter in his hand and they surrounded their the bar as with the custom of kings during their lives and all the troops of Egypt went before him in this array. And first of all, the mighty men of Pharaoh and the mighty men of Joseph. And after them, the rest of the inhabitants of Egypt. And they were all girded with swords and equipped with coats of mail. And the trappings of war were upon them. And, they, and all the weepers and mourners were at a distance opposite to the buyer, going and weeping and lamenting. And the rest of the people went after the buyer. And Joseph and his household went together near that buyer barefooted. And weeping, the rest of Joseph's service went around him. Each man had his ornaments upon him, and they were all armed with their weapons of war. And fifty of Jacob's servants went in front of the buyer, and they strewed along the road myrrh and aloes and all the manner of perfume, and all the sons of Jacob that carried the buyer upon walked upon the perfumery. And the servants of Jacob went before them, strewing the perfume along the road. And Joseph went up with a heavy camp, and they did after this manner every day until they reached the land of Canaan. And they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which was on the other side of Jordan, and they mourned on an exceeding great and heavy mourning in that place. Genesis 50, verse 10. And all the kings of Canaan heard of this thing, and they all went forth, each man from his house, 31 kings of Canaan, and they all came with their men to mourn and weep over Jacob. Genesis 50 verse 11. And all these kings beheld Jacob's buyer.
And behold, Joseph's crown was upon it. And they also put their crowns upon the bier and encircled it with crowns. And all these kings made it in that place a great and heavy mourning with the sons of Jacob and Egypt over Jacob. For all the kings of Canaan knew the valor of Jacob and his sons. Heck yeah, they did. Hell, look what they did to Shechem and the surrounding cities. They destroyed that, man. And the report reached Esau, saying, Jacob died in Egypt, and his sons and all Egypt are conveying him to the land of Canaan to bury him. And Esau heard this thing, and he was dwelling in Mount Seir, and that's where you Caucasian people are from, Mount Seir. This is your dwelling. Your father is Esau, who is Edom. Okay? You were our brother. You just have a different color, but you was our brother. And, you know, some things just didn't work out between us the way that they should. But nevertheless, we don't abhor you because we're not told to abhor Edomite. This is your kingdom. And we do as we're told. As long as it's not against the words of the Most High. All right. And Esau heard this thing and he was dwelling in Mount Seir and he rose up with his sons and all his people and all his household. A people exceedingly great and they came to mourn and weep over Jacob. And the Canaan passed when Esau came, he mourned for his brother Jacob. And all Egypt and all Canaan again rose up and mourned a great mourning with Esau over Jacob in that place. And Joseph and his brethren brought their father Jacob from that place, and they went to Hebron to bury Jacob in the cave by his fathers. And they came to Kiriath Arba to the cave, and, they, and as they came, Esau stood with his sons against Joseph and his brethren as a hindrance in the cave, saying, Jacob shall not be buried therein, for it is belonging to us and to our father. And Joseph and his brethren heard the words of Esau, Esau's sons, and they were exceedingly wroth. And Joseph approached them to Esau, saying, What is this thing which they have spoken? Surely my father Jacob bought it from thee for the great riches after the death of Isaac. Now, five and twenty years ago, and also all the land of Canaan, he brought from thee and from thy sons and thy seed after thee. And Jacob bought it for his sons and his seed after him for inheritance forever. And why speakest thou these things this day? When we burying our father, when we speaking this craziness, Esau. And Esau answered, saying, Thou speakest falsely and utterest lies, for I sow not anything belonging to me in all this land. As thou sayest, neither did my brother Jacob buy aught belonging to me in this land. And Esau spoke these things in order to deceive Joseph with his words. For Esau knew that Joseph was not present in those days when Esau sold all belonging to him in the land of Canaan to Jacob. And Joseph said to Esau, Surely my father inserted these things with thee in the, in the record of purchase, and testified the record with witnesses. And behold, it is with us in Egypt. And Esau answered, saying to him, Bring the record, all that thou wilt find the record, so we will do. <clears throat> and Joseph called unto Naphtali, his brother, and he said, Hasten quickly, stay not, and run, I pray thee, to Egypt, and bring all the records, the records of the purchase, the sealed record, and the open record, and also the first records in, in which all the transactions of the birthright are written, fetch thou, and thou shalt bring them unto us hither that we may know from them all the words of Esau and his sons which they spoke this day. And Naphtali hearkened to the voice of Yosef, and he hastened and ran to go down to Egypt. And Naphtali was lighter on foot than any of the stags that were upon the wilderness, for he would go upon the ears of corn without... Look at this! That is the flash. If that ain't the flash, I don't know what is. He was lighter on foot than any other stags, those horses that were upon the wilderness, for he would go upon ears of corn without crushing them. Forget Usain Bolt. And when Esau saw that Naphtali had gone to fetch the records, he and his sons increased their resistance against the cave. And Esau and all his people rose up against Joseph. And his brethren to battle. 
and all the sons of Jacob and the people of Egypt fought with Esau. They fighting their grandsons, you know. They're fighting. <sighs> no, they're fighting his nephews. And all the sons of Jacob and all the people of Egypt fought with Esau and his men. And the sons of Esau and his people were smitten before the sons of Jacob. And the sons of Jacob slew of Esau's people 40 men. And Cushim, the son of Dan, the son of Jacob, was at that time with Jacob's sons. But he was about a hundred cubits distance from the place of battle. For he remained with the children of Jacob's sons by Jacob's buyer to guard it. And Cushim was dumb and deaf. Still, he understood the voice of consternation amongst men. And he asked, saying, Why do you not bury the dead? And what is this great consternation? And they answered him the words of Esau and his sons. And he ran to Esau in the midst of the battle. And he slew Esau with a sword. And he cut off his head. And it sprang to a distance. And Esau fell amongst the people of the battle. And when Cushim did this thing, the sons of Jacob prevailed over the sons of Esau. And the sons of Jacob buried their father Jacob by force in the cave. And the sons of Esau beheld it. So before Naphtali could even get back with the records, Esau was waging war in a burial place. And Cushim, the son of Dan, this adder in the path, was the one that killed Esau. And when Cushim did, uh, and Jacob was buried in Hebron in the cave of Machpelah, which Abraham had brought from the sons of Heth for the possession of a burial place. And he was... Buried in very costly garments. This is, uh, that was Genesis 50 verse 12. And no king had such honor paid him as Joseph paid unto his father at his death. For he buried him with great honor, like unto the burial of kings. And Joseph and his brethren made a mourning of seven days for their father. Uh, you see how Esau just tried to cause trouble. You know, just... Know your history. Know who you are as a people. Know why that spirit is in you. All right, man. Nothing else to say about that, man. You know, not Naphtali got out of that war. <laughs> He's so busy running to Egypt to get the things, and yeah, he missed out on that one. All right, it's your boy, y'all's chosen one, man. Love you guys too. Keep the word, keep the faith, and always do the things that Yah wants you to do. Shalom.